Want to remember the parties we weren't invited to? Check out the number 10 parties tour shirts and posters. The link is in the description below. It's been one hell of a week. We've seen the Prime Minister accused of breaking his own lockdown rules, him issuing an apology, and numerous MPs, including some Conservatives, demanding his resignation. The main questions are, what do the public think? Do they support calls for his resignation? Should he resign? What does the Ministerial Code say about the matter? And who exactly is calling for his resignation? And does that matter? So, first things first, what's just happened? Well, as we covered in this video, on Monday, ITV News got a hold of an email from Martin Reynolds, the Prime Minister's personal private secretary, inviting around 100 people to a Bring Your Own Booze event at Number 10 Downing Street. According to the ITV News report, around 40 people, including Boris Johnson and wife Carrie Simmons, ended up attending. This was at a time when you were only allowed to meet one other person outside your household and it had to be socially distanced in an outdoor public space. On Wednesday, at Prime Minister's Questions, Johnson acknowledged the allegations and apologised. Or, well, he sort of apologised. Mr Speaker, I want to apologise. And I know the rage they feel with me and with the government I lead when they think that in Downing Street itself the rules are not being properly followed by the people who make the rules. Number 10 is a big department with the garden as, as an extension of the office, which has been in constant use because of the role of fresh air in stopping the virus. And when I went into that garden just after six on the 20th of May 2020 to thank groups of staff before going back into my office 25 minutes later to continue working, I believed implicitly that this was a work event. And I should have recognised that even if it could be said technically to fall within the guidance, there would be millions and millions of people who simply would not see it that way. This clearly wasn't enough for the opposition parties though, who all called on him to resign. A few hours later, the leader of the Scottish Conservatives, Douglas Ross, did the same via Sky News. So should the Prime Minister resign? Well, there's a sort of rule book stipulating how ministers should behave in office, known as the Ministerial Code. For example, the Ministerial Code prohibits bullying. By convention, if a minister breaks the Ministerial Code, they're expected to resign. So, has Johnson broken the Ministerial Code? Well, it's tricky. Chapter 1.3c stipulates that it is of paramount importance that ministers give accurate and truthful information to Parliament, correcting any inadvertent error at the earliest opportunity. Ministers who knowingly mislead Parliament will be expected to offer their resignation to the Prime Minister. Now, although it seems that there was a party in the back garden of Number 10, the Prime Minister claims that he believed it to be a work meeting. According to a recent blog post by Dominic Cummings, it was common for meetings to take place in the garden due to the fact that fresh air hinders the spread of coronavirus. So, does this make Johnson's claim reasonable? There were meetings regularly outdoors, and why would he believe this was any different? Well, we've seen a picture of an actual back garden meeting, with small groups gathered and talking. There's no buffet, people don't appear to be boozing, except for one wine bottle on Johnson's table. From what we've heard about the 20th of May gathering, it was markedly different. There were 100 or so people invited, of whom about 40 reportedly turned up, and it was bring your own booze. So, it's hard to believe that Johnson was supposedly there for 25 minutes and didn't realise it was a social event. But, even if he genuinely didn't think the event on the May the 20th was a party, he still might have broken the ministerial code. At Prime Minister's Questions on December the 8th, the day after that video of Downing Street staffers joking about a party had been leaked, Johnson strongly implied that he was unaware of any number 10 parties. This now seems implausible given that A. Johnson was at a party and B. there were email invites sent by his personal private secretary to a hundred people organising a party in his house, although it's worth noting that number 10 claims Johnson never received an email himself. Just as a side note here, there isn't anything mentioned in the ministerial code about ministers breaking the law, so there is no precedent for what happens if the Met determines that Johnson broke the law. 
It's important to point out that it's highly unlikely that they'd find that Johnson personally broke the law anyway, because the rules stated that you couldn't leave your house except for a few limited reasons. As Johnson didn't, on this occasion, leave his house, it's hard to argue, from a legal perspective, that he did anything wrong, according to our favourite Twitter lawyer Adam Wagner. There is a possibility that he could be prosecuted as an accessory, but this would be a lot harder, and thus a lot less likely. So, what's Johnson said in response to these calls for his resignation? Well, his line seems to be that no further action will be taken until Sue Gray, the civil servant investigating the alleged Downing Street parties, has finished her investigation. Now, it's worth noting that A, Sue Gray is a civil servant and therefore unlikely to say anything about whether Johnson broke the ministerial code, only that Johnson himself can order investigations into the breaches of the code, B, the government hasn't committed to releasing the full report, just the quote, findings of the report, and C, the government spokesperson has refused to say whether the Prime Minister will even accept the report's recommendations. Nonetheless, Johnson has made it clear that he doesn't plan on resigning any time soon. This doesn't mean he's safe though. The other option, which was also mentioned in Prime Minister's questions, is that Tory MPs get rid of him. Tory backbenchers can submit letters to the 1922 committee which demonstrate that they no longer have confidence in the government, and if 15% of Tory MPs, currently 54 MPs, pen such letters, then a leadership election is held. So far, five Conservative MPs have publicly admitted to sending letters of no confidence, but the true number is likely much higher. Now, Johnson has always had a transactional relationship with his parliamentary party. Johnson doesn't have many real allies. Conservative MPs picked him as leader because he's good at winning elections. This means that if his poll ratings fall, Johnson will be uniquely vulnerable. His one selling point is his electability, and if he loses that, Conservative MPs are unlikely to tolerate him much longer. So what are the polls saying? Well, a poll conducted by Savanta Comres before Johnson's apology in the Commons found that two-thirds of voters think Boris Johnson should resign, with only 24% thinking he shouldn't. Another pre-apology poll by YouGov found that Labour now have a 10-point lead over the Conservatives, with the Conservatives on just 28%. This is the largest YouGov lead Labour have had since December 2013 and the lowest Conservative vote share since the 2019 general election. Worse still, the first post-apology poll by Focal Data came out on Thursday and found that Labour maintained a nine-point lead over the Conservatives. Another post-apology poll by YouGov released on Thursday gave Labour an 11-point lead, with the Conservatives still below 30%. This is more bad news for Johnson, because it looks like Johnson's apology has done little to convince the public. Anyway, the point is that Johnson is uniquely vulnerable to poll slumps because of his transactional relationship with his parliamentary party. So, these numbers should worry him, as should the response by his cabinet. While the cabinet did all individually send out messages of support to the Prime Minister through Wednesday, they were all muted in their enthusiasm, and Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss, the two frontrunners to succeed Johnson, waited pretty long to back the PM. Things got even worse on Friday when The Telegraph ran a story claiming that there were another two parties held in Downing Street on April the 16th, one apparently a leaving party for James Slack, then Johnson's spin doctor and now deputy editor of The Sun, which might explain why their number 10 party coverage has been a bit, well, muted. Now, Johnson wasn't there at the time, he was at Chequers, But the optics are essentially bad because this all happened just hours before the Queen's socially distanced funeral for Prince Philip. Anyway, what do you think of this seemingly never-ending party scandal? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. People across the UK have been furious about the parties held at number 10. We were locked in our homes and not allowed to see our loved ones while they partied. So, if you want to remember the parties we missed and get money to those in need of COVID support, then check out our number 10 parties tour shirts and posters. They feature all of the parties that we know about so far and hopefully look pretty cool too. The link's in the description below. Thanks for your support. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we upload. 
Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos like these people, you too can back us on Patreon. It's all linked down below.